So a social media company redesigned its UI to include notifications to users when they receive friend requests. Evaluate if this change increased the friend request acceptance rate. Find the acceptance rate for friend requests sent in the four weeks prior to and including July 2nd, 2022. Note, the acceptance rate is the percentage of sent requests that were accepted. Another note, assume that nobody sends or accepts the same request twice. This is a very relevant question, right? We think about a social media company that might be, you know, testing or using this type of query or feature. Like think of like Facebook, right? You send a lot of requests on there, friend requests. Instagram, you send follow requests, right, to people. Twitter or x.com, you do the same thing. You follow people. LinkedIn, LinkedIn has a great place to connect with people. So there's a key like tips in the problem, in the problem statement itself that we have to evaluate. The first is that we want to find this acceptance rate. We're concerned about out of all the ones you sent, how many of those were accepted. And then there's another key piece of information here, which is four weeks prior to and including July 2nd, 2022. So that means that we're interested in a time window. We are trying to filter based on some date of the friend request sent date focused on July 2nd and four weeks prior. So four weeks prior, roughly June 2nd, right? June 2nd, maybe a couple of days after, and then four full weeks until July 2nd. So the first thing I would do for this problem, right, is I would look at the schema. So the we have the input table, we have the friend re request table, right? This has requester ID, receiver ID, sent at. And the, so the for important thing for any type of problem like this is to really understand the input and output parameters, right? That that's that's going to lead you to success as a general principle is just very clearly understand the problem statement and the schema for like a SQL question like this. Okay. Then we have a friends request accepted table where the acceptor ID, requester ID, and accept it at, which is another timestamp. I'm seeing that the requester ID is common to both tables, right? So in, in SQL, this might be a foreign key, a primary key in this table, right? A unique identifier row, a unique identifier value for each row across the table. So that's requester ID in the friend request table. And then a foreign key, meaning it's not a primary key in its table, but it's a it links to a primary key in another table is requester ID in the request accepted table. So that's what I see. Then I also see that this receiver ID in the friend request table is similar to an acceptor ID, right? In the request accepted table. So if I'm sending a request to someone, I'm the requester ID, that person receives my request. But in the request accepted table, that person accepts, gets an acceptor ID and then the requester ID. So these tables are, are, are related, very closely related, but the, the primary information in the request table is the requester ID and the primary information in the request accepted is the acceptor ID. Okay. And then the final thing to look at is this send column. This is a time, the date time column, right? So that's going to be key for, for creating our filter, right? So we want to create our filter. So we're going to probably filter on that because it says find the acceptance rate for request sent in the prior. So this is the sent at field. Okay. And so our output is just a single column, which is called acceptance rate, which is a float. So let's, let's take a look. Let's first, you know, helpful thing might be to write some pseudo code so we can do this interview query has this great comments section. You can write comments and then this is in like markdown, right? That's why I'm doing this. And so acceptance rate. So what does my acceptance rate look like? So I'm going to say acceptance rate, and then I'm going to say equals count requests, a request accepted dot 
requester ID. So out of the out of the, all the requests that are sent, I I just care about the accepted requests divided by the total amount of requests sent. So that's going to be our key our key insight. One of our first key insights. So count of a friend request requester ID. Another key thing we have to think about is how do we define the 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 join, right? So we have to join these two tables, right? So we have to do a join, but an inner join, right? The default SQL, MySQL here, we're using MySQL 8.0.35. The default join is an inner join, which just gives you the matching rows from each for each key that you're joining on. However, here we do care about the unmatched values for requester ID, right? Where we're gonna get a null for requester ID here. So that means we care about all the rows in friend requests. And then we just wanna link in the matching rows on requester ID. So we're gonna actually do a left join. We're going to do a left join to get that. And we're going to join on requester ID. Uh, the next key fact we got to think about is how we're going to construct a date filter, right? So we can use a function, a SQL function called between. The between operator looks at all of the, all of the values between two dates. And so the first parameter is gonna be our initial date and the second parameter is gonna be our date. So we want July 2nd, 2022. And then we want the interval of minus four weeks before that interval, right? And so we are going to construct our query that way. So let's start to write the query now. Now that we've got like, the structure of the data, data, right? This is going to be in our select clause. This is going to be in our left join, and this is going to be our filter in the where clause. So, you know, this is a very good question, right? To 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 practice our SQL knowledge, right? To know that how we think about a problem, how how a query is structured, right? So so let's let's go for it. So select count. So let's just make sure we're selecting from. So remember, in a SQL query, the from clause is actually evaluated first. So it's not bad to to kind of put that to put that first. So we're gonna do from friend request. So so we alias that. So fr dot requester id, and then we're gonna divide by count of requests accepted. So let's write that join left join requests accepted. And we're going to alias that. We can also write an alias using the as keyword. So as, and then this just, just shortens our query, right? So we don't have to type out that whole thing. We can just reference the table with that shorthand. So R underscore A. So no, sorry. We want the request accepted requester ID. And then we want the friend requests. This is going to be our total, our total thing, right? So our numerator is the number of accepted requests from our request accepted table. That's our numerator, right? Our denominator is all of the requests that were sent. So the friend request table has all of our uh, requests sent, right? But only a fraction of those are actually accepted, right? So we, we, we look at that fraction. So and let's alias this, right? Because our example, we are going to want to output it as acceptance rate, acceptance rate. Okay, so to finish this off, we're going to join on, right? So we're going to do F underscore R the, on the common field. So requester ID. So on FR dot requester ID equals R underscore A dot acceptor ID. Okay, great. So this is a start. So let's think we we've calculated the acceptance rate, we've joined the two tables, we've done a left join, we've already done a lot. 
but we still have to add the filter for our date clause. So we're going to add a where clause, where, and we're going to use the date field in our request, friend request table. So friend request dot accept dot sent underscore at. Let's just double check my notes here. So where cast friend fr dot sent as date as date and then we're gonna do between date add and we're gonna do 220702 interval minus four weeks okay so let's think here count request accepted requester id divided by count friend request dot requester ID as acceptance rate from friend request left join request accepted R A F R dot requester. Oops. Okay. So we got to fix that join condition. Okay. So we pass one of the test cases, but I want us to look at the example here. This is important. Okay. So this is also very helpful that interview query, not only does it give you the example data, it gives you the example, right? Example scheme, this is called a schema, right? So this is schema definition, very helpful. It tells us the column name and the type, the data type of that column, right? That's very helpful. But, you know, the next step is for you to really think about the what that data actually looks like. So, so interview query does give you that data, right? So friend, so here's an example, friend underscore requests where requester ID is one and receiver ID is two. And this was sent July 3rd, 2022 at 5.03 PM. So we notice here, this is actually accepted after our july 2nd cutoff right so this is sent after our july 2nd cutoff then requester id 2 sends a request to receiver id 1 and that was sent on july 1st okay but our request accepted so these are the requests sent requester id 1 sent a request on the third and requester id 2 sent a request on the first but on our re request accepted table we have two rows where the acceptor ID is two, right? So that means the receiver ID is two. So that means this that corresponds to this request, right? So this, this is not right, right? So we have the requester ID. So the request acceptor ID, he accepted this. And this is also a duplicate row, but this is except, or no, sorry, it's not duplicate row because this was saying it was accepted on the 10th and then it was accepted on the 12th. But this is outside of our date range, right? So we need to handle that. So what we're going to do, so basically what it's expecting our output to be is zero, right? Because our, our the, the, it, nothing falls with it. No request was accepted during that date range, right? So what we're going to add here is some code to make sure that we are going to handle that cases where nothing falls within the date range, right? So we can use a function called coalesce. The coalesce function, basically, it returns the first non-null argument in a list. So if this could be null, right? This count of requester ID and count of requester ID from, our, from a request accepted table versus our friend request table, this could be null. So we could have to do, we could write a coalesce function. So we do, this might return as null. So then it's going to return our first non-null argument. So we are going, so let's first submit. We're going to anticipate that we're going to need the coalesce function, but let's first submit the solution as is and see why we might need the coalesce function, right? Okay, so we pass three test cases and we fail one test case, right? So test case one, we pass, we got half, we got 0.5%, right? Test case two, we're expecting a zero, we got a zero. 
Test case three, we outputted a null, but we were actually expecting a one. So if we analyze this test case here, right, it's showing us that friend requests, requester ID one and requester ID three, this is both sent out of the date range, right? This is not between July 2nd and four weeks prior. This is after July 2nd, and this is before four weeks prior. This is like several months prior, right? So this is going to return null. We don't, nothing, none of the requests were sent in the acceptable date range, right? So we are going to handle, but it's expecting a one. Notice it's expecting the, if, if there's no data accepted, right? We could re return a zero or we could return a null here. We're returning a one because we want to say, look, there's one, it, it's, since there's no data reported, we're just going to say it's an acceptance rate of, of, of 100. Now, that's a metric that you could talk to the interviewer about that. Hey, why are we expecting one here? Shouldn't we expect a zero? It, it might be more informative, right? But, and that sort of shows that like you're thinking about from a product perspective, like what metric is actually valuable for us to track. So here's, let, let's fix that. So we're going to use the coalesce function, coalesce. We're going to do, so this is our first argument. Our second argument is to return one. So now we're going to resubmit our solution. So this whole thing is being aliased. So we're going to actually put a one here. So coalesce, give me this ratio requests, accept the requester IDs of the accepted requests divided by the all the requests sent from the friend request table. Or if that's null, then give me a one. And then that's our acceptance rate, right? So we submit that. And congratulations, you passed all the test cases. We're ready for another question. So this is a great test of your SQL skills, right? Your knowledge. Are you able to, you know, join tables? Are you able to see what the common ID is? Are you able to use advanced, you know, SQL functions like coalesce, right? That, that handle null values in your response. Are you able to do joins? Are you able to understand the difference between an inner join, a left join, a right join, or an outer join, and when to use those, then this is also expecting you to use this function. Notice you could have used a different function. You could have used like just the date between. You could have hard-coded the date, right? So between June 2nd, between July 2nd and four weeks prior, you could have found what date that was and then used the where clause. And then between those two operators, right, the 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 four weeks prior date versus the, the end date. But we use this between function, which does kind of show a more advanced functionality. And we're able to pass all the test cases and we're able to do so in a way where we sound confident and we're able to, you know, showcase to the hiring manager how we think through a problem, right? How, how we step-by-step -step approach that. And so this interview query platform is great for us to write comments, right? S write the pseudo code. Then we're able to write the code, test the code, and then pass the test cases and then see what our test cases actually are. Log into interview query. There's lots of practice problems by topic, SQL, Python. You can also practice by company. There's tags for problems commonly asked by company. And all the questions are rated by difficulty, right? So I'm going to upvote this question. This is a great question. Keep practicing on interview query.